The main change that we've made um, moving into a mastery approach has been making sure all the children are focused on the same context of the lesson all the time. So although there'll be changes and, and, and a variety within that lesson, uh, the context say, stays the same. TMA, good as gold. Let me see your fingers around the six ears. Yeah, six. The purpose of me getting children to chant, and we call that rolling numbers, is that I wanted the children to have some security before we started the lesson. And TMA says... 66. So by chanting, it opens the door for all the children to start accessing the learning immediately. We can do our sevens too. In year three, we've really, really focused on the children's times tables. They need to have, be really secure before they can move on in the school to explore other mathematical concepts. The faster that they can get these children secure in it and writing with strong fluency, the easier they're going to find other subject areas as they move through. So if we can get them secure now, confidently chanting, confidently writing with a really good, well-paced fluency, they're going to feel much more secure as they go through the school. Today, we are going to be looking at multiplication by six and we want to make sure we're multiplying accurately. Have a look at this number line. Where is the frog, Kira? At zero. Could you tell me that as a multiplication sentence? Zero times six equals zero. Good girl. The frog has made one interval jump of six. Where is he now? Where is he now, Gary? He's at six. One times six equals six. Good girl. One times six equals six. Now the frog has made two jumps. Both intervals are six. Where is he now, Oshan? He's on 12, 2 times 6 equals 12. Good boy. He's on 12 and 2 times 6 equals 12. We can write this as 1 times 6 equals 6. Is there another way we can say it? Lily? 6 times 1 equals 6. Good girl. 6 times 1 equals 6. Initially I was a little bit sceptical. I was struggling to see how I could teach all the class with such differing abilities at the same time. It was important that I focused on the context of the lesson and made sure, made sure all the children could start and, be, and access the learning immediately before we all moved on as a class. 2 times 6 equals 12. What's the other way we can say that? Katie? 6 times 2 equals 12. Good girl. Why is the answer the same? Talk to your learning partner. Why is the answer the same? Okay, and three, two, one. Why is the answer the same, Myra? Because if you do like. 2 times 6 is, um, is 12. Uh, 12 times 6 is... So we had 6 times 2 is 12. How else could we say that? Um, 2 times 6 is 12. Good girl. Well done. Can we remember the rule for that? What's it called? You just have to sort the numbers around. And can you remember the law that we said that that was called? Um, commutative law. Good girl, it's called commutative law. Well done. OK, let's look at the next slide. We started at 0 times 6. We're going to say it all together. OK, so eyes this way. And we're going to work through our 6 times table. 0 times 6 is 0. Have a look at what we've got on the board now. 
Would you get open your books? Well done. What I'd like you to do is complete your six times table, just like I've done on the board, putting in the full answers. Okay, off you go. You've got two minutes. It was important to me to see who had an understanding and who was struggling. It was an opportunity for me to start assessing the children at a very early point in the lesson. What I need you to do is do your multiplication sort of the way down the side now. So that's just there as a guide. Carry on going down here, sweetheart. Oh, okay, so it's the full number sentence you need. Eight and you two. I need you to carry on going with the full number sentence down there for me. Okay, if you finish that, write down what you notice about the six times table. So you can write it into your book. What are you noticing about the six times table? If you can spot a pattern, write in what you can see. So you've got one times six, good boy, is six. Two times six, lovely, is twelve. Three times six. What is multiplication? How did we practice it to remind ourselves what multiplication is? We, we do six, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty. Oh, hold on a second, sweetheart. Remember that multiplication is just repeated addition. Okay? So if we've done... 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 6 is 6, plus 6. What's 3 times 6? For one child, I just needed to talk through it again to help them make the link between multiplication and repeated addition. So 2 times 6 is the same as 6 plus 6. Good boy. So what is 3 times 6 if we think of repeated addition? Shall we see if we can write it? Let's write 2 times 6 as repeated addition next to that for me. 18. 18. Good boy. How did you get to that, though? Don't worry about anything else at the moment. How did you get to that one? <coughs> Good boy. Do you want to show me that repeated addition next to it? See if that helps you now to get 4 times 6. Answer be. If we know, good boy, good boy. And just to help you out, just to check. What do you notice? How much more is 24 from 18? Six. Good boy. So now you can carry on doing those. And just remember, it's just repeated addition each time. Good boy. When he realised that, he then was able to continue with the lesson very securely. Can I have everyone's eyes on the board so we can go through the six times table together? And at the end, let's see what we've noticed about the six times table. So eyes on here. Could we start with Emily? Could you start off for us? We're going to read in full number sentences. One times six equals six. In the first part of the lesson, Three we focused on what we notice with multiples of six. Three times six equals 18. Four times six equals 24. It was important for them to make sure they understood that there's pattern in our multiples. Six equals 36. And then we'll go to Ada. Seven times six equals 32. 42. Good girl. 8 times 6 equals 48. And Cleo? 9 times 6 equals 54. And can you finish us off, Vikram? 10 times 6 equals 60. What did you notice 
about the six times table. What did you find? Vikram, what did you notice? They were all in the two times tables. OK. What did you notice about that if they were in the two times table? How do you know? It's also really supported my EAL children. Um, some children came have, not having a strong grasp of the English language. There's not too many elements in the mathematical language to use. So by constantly practicing over and over again, the language, it's really strengthened their understanding of what they're explaining to. How did you know straight away that those are in the two times table? Because six was in the two times table too. Good two, boy. Two, four, six. OK, so what are you identifying about each number? The last, there's like, the last part is, has got a 2 or an 8 or a 4 or sometimes a 0 too. Good boy. What's Vikram saying then? Ada, what's Vikram saying? He's saying that the last uh, digit of, for an example, the number 24, it, the, the number 4 is uh, in the two times tables. And it... Can you identify something else about the numbers that Vikram said? 2, 4, 6, 8 and 0. Katie, what are those numbers? They're all even numbers. Good, they're all even numbers. So Vikram, you identified them, that they are in the two times table. Good boy. They're also all even numbers. Did anyone find a pattern? Karasan. Yeah, that you're just adding six and you're just repeating addition. Good boy, it's repeated addition. Did anyone find another pattern there? The number of times in six with just goes up in ones. Good, so we've got our going up in ones down one side. Good. Anything else about the answers? Is there a pattern there? There is. The answers are always, the, thing, the digits always end in six. Oh, the pattern for the digits is always six, two, eight, four, zero, and then it all starts. Good, all it repeats there. itself. There's a repeating pattern, isn't there? So it's six, two, eight, four, zero, six, two, eight, four, and continues with zero. Move on to the other side. Can you now complete that side of the times table? So exactly as I've done on here, the first one is six times one equals. Can you carry on completing that multiplication? Let's do six times one equals and carry that on for me. It is the other way around, good boy. It was important that the children identified the commutative law, that it didn't matter which way we wrote our multiple, the answer would be the same. Six time, times one equals, what's that going to be? Could you tell me the number sentence? Mm. Remember our commutative law, when our numbers, it doesn't matter which way up they are with multiplication, the answer is still the same. So we have 1 times 6 equals 6. 6 times 1 equals 6. Tell me that as a number sentence. Tell it in full to me. 6 times 1 equals 6. Good boy. What would the next one be? 2, no. Make sure it's the right way around. So it's on the board to help you as well. So the next one starts 6 times 2 equals. 6 times 2 equals 12. Good boy. What's the next one? 6 times 3. 18. Good boy, keep going. Taking this approach to maths, it was interesting to see how I needed to focus on my subject knowledge. As you're looking at what that next step is for the children, they are baby steps. It's like peeling an onion, what's the next layer, and really looking at what is the next layer. I had to really look back at my own subject knowledge to ensure that I knew the next layer, and at times that was a little bit tricky to not try and move the children on too quickly. If you've finished that, now have a look at them <clears throat> and say what is the same and what is different. When I ask them what's the same and what's different, 
I want them to start pulling apart what they're seeing. So again, it's not just looking at the answer, it's looking at the whole package, it's looking at what, what, what makes the six times table the six times table, what are all the elements and what do each part represent. So you're looking at your first column and your second column, what is the same and what is different? Yep. And write them into your book, what you're, not, what you're noticing. I'm noticing that uh, the answer is the same uh, either way around. So if you've done 8 times 6 equals 48, then 6 times 8 equals 48, the answer will still be the same. What do you notice about these? So we have 1 times 6 equals 6, 6 times 4 equals 6. Good. So what is the same and what is different? If it's swapping around, the that answer. would be different. So what is the same? The answer. And what is different? Mm, swapping around. Okay, see if you can explain that to me and see if you can identify anything else there that is the same or different. Okay, good boy. <coughs> I wanted them to start at that point, start writing what, what they noticed and what they found similar or what they found different to give full explanations as well, and that's something that we've been putting a lot more practice into, getting the children to write full explanations in their maths books. So if you have not finished, do not worry, we're just going to go through those together. So start me here, Gary. Six times one equals six. Good girl, Oshan. Two times six oh, equals... does it have a look at... See what it exactly six says? Six times two Good equals boy. twelve. Six times three equals eighteen. Six times four equals twenty-four. Six times five equals thirty. Six times six equals thirty-six. Six times seven equals forty-two. Good girl. Six times eight equals forty-eight. Good boy. Six times nine equals fifty-four. And Joe? Six times ten equals six. Good boy. Everything we did within the lesson was about the six times table. It was the children were being extended and deepened, and they were mastering their skills more in different ways, but the focus of the lesson stayed the same. And that's the main difference of the way we're teaching now, that it's, there's a key focus of one element of maths, and that's what we're focusing on throughout the lesson. Here are some insects. <coughs> one insect has six legs. Lily, would you carry this on for me, the full sentence? Two insects have 12 legs. Good girl. And Trinity? Three insects have... Eighteen legs. Good girl. And Cleo? For example, using the insects, it was identifying that one insect has six legs, two insects have 12 legs, and carrying on. So they're looking at their multiplications in a different way. Four insects have 24 legs. Good girl. Five insects have 30 legs. By them explaining what their answer is in a full sentence, it also secures their understanding, but it also makes them think about what each element of that number sentence is. Six insects have 36 legs. And Ada? Seven insects have 42 legs. And Kyle? Eight, eight insects have 48 legs. And Lyndon? Nine insects have... Fifty-four legs. Good boy. 